Welcome to Excel 2010 Pivot Tables. I'm Trainer Lori. Why use pivot tables? It can transform endless rows and columns into a meaningful presentation. In other words, you can take something that's in a column and turn it into a row, and something that's in a row and put it into a column. It automatically creates subtotals in any level group uh, just simply by clicking and dragging. And you can't make a mistake because it doesn't touch the real data. You can't accidentally delete anything. It doesn't touch the data. For example, here's a little database in Excel, and here's what the pivot table looks like. I didn't have to create one formula. It automatically summed and um, grouped the information. First, select the database. My favorite way, of course, is to click in the data and then hit Control A. It's also a good idea to name it, but it's not critical. But uh, that way you'll have a named range called database, and uh, pivot tables always recognize the name database. But you don't have to do that. You just have to select the database. And then we come up here and hit pivot table. That opens a dialog box that asks, what data do you want? And we've already selected it, so it's already in there. However, if you want to use an external data source, for example, an, an access database or a SQL database, you can do that as well. And you can also choose where you want the pivot table to be placed. Then this opens up, and it looks a little scary, but don't worry about it. It's a little bit different from earlier versions in that we use everything on the right side. So we're going to look at what's on the right side. For example, you click a drop down and you'll get more information. If you can't remember what's in that field, you can see what it is simply by clicking the drop down. If you don't know what to do, simply check some of the fields. And when you do that, it'll automatically put them down below and it may guess correctly. So it's not a bad idea just to uh, check some of the fields and see what it can do. All right. So that's the physical way of doing it, but how do you do it intellectually? What, what, how do I know which fields go into which areas? Well, this is syntax that I've developed that I think helps to determine, one, if you need a pivot table, and then two, how to use it. So the first one, it would be sum or count, but we'll just say sum, but you can see count or uh, any of the, the normal uh, formulas will work here. Sum the blank, and if you can put something in blank, then a pivot table might work for you. Organize by blank, and then that means it would go into a row label. So again, you'd have to fill in the blank, and by blank, and occasionally by blank. If you can fill all those in, then you could probably need a pivot table. So sum the blank, and that's going to be a value. So that's down in the bottom right corner. So sum or count would be in the bottom right value uh, in the values area. Organize by blank, that becomes a row label. So the second one, if you can fill in that blank, that becomes the row label. So we'll start in the bottom right corner and work our way around. And by blank, and then that would be a column label. And occasionally by blank, that would be a report filter. If you find that you only need a couple of them, like sum the blank, organized by blank, then you probably don't need a pivot table. You could probably do what you need to do in a subtotal, and you'd find that under data subtotal. But if you have three or more of these, then you definitely want a pivot table. Let's look at the first one, sum the blank. So I will click on, in this click case, it's a number, so it's mclue number. We click and drag it down to values. And when we do that, then it shows up over here. It doesn't have a lot of information yet. By the way, you can click the drop down and see other options, including value field settings. So if uh, sum and count aren't the ones that you want, then you have other options in there. Numbers will always be summed, and text will always be counted. You can't do anything else with text, but you can do a lot of other things with numbers. So you can click the drop down there and decide which options that you want from the usual suspects. And you also can choose the number format. So you can change how you want it to look. So um, uh, you have a lot of options with that drop down. The next one is row labels. And row labels is what is by default, if you simply click the check here, it will automatically go into row labels. And that means that it's labeling what would go into a row. So it's going to be in a column going down the side. If you decide you didn't want that as a row label, then or any of these, if you don't want any of them, simply click on 
and drag it off. The third one is column labels. And with column label, it takes the information and puts it across the top and shows you what's going to be in the columns. And the last one is report filter. That's and occasionally by blank. When you use report filter, then it becomes a drop down. And you can choose which items you want to see, all of them or just some of them. So think it out before you create a pivot table. Really want to think it through. Um, sum the blank by blank and occasionally by blank, something like that. So in this case, we want to sum the coupon value by sales office and occasionally by MCLO. So that means that my information needs to go where? Hopefully you said sum over in values, coupon value and then by sales office and occasionally because that's the occasionally that's a report filter and this is what that pivot table would look like once you've created your pivot table you might want to show the values a different way for example instead of showing it as numbers I want to see it as percentages you've got a lot of options if you want more information simply click the total when you have a, a total in a pivot table and you can get this this piece of information down down below if you double click on the total create a whole new sheet just of that information so it's a great way to drill down and see more information once you've created your pivot table you might want to display it in something a little easier to see like a pivot chart and it will create your chart just like it would in, if you went to insert chart only this time it would be based on the pivot table. And you can change your pivot table styles uh, just uh, using the design options. So if you want to change the color and the look of it. But this is probably the best part of pivot tables in Excel 2010 and that's called Slicer. When you insert Slicer it'll ask which fields would you like to be used as slicers. What they are are filters but they're pretty filters. So instead of getting the check boxes like you would normally in a filter where you have to go through and check them you actually see the names of them and you simply click the one you want let me show you see I've moved them around and I've changed the color so that they look a little bit different so they're uh, you can tell them apart is easier and then you click on one for example I clicked on performance rating and you can see now that that one's bold or colored the others you can see the the ones that are faint those are uh, hidden essentially and it's showing me just the ones that got the performance ratings and what departments so you don't even need to see the data if you don't want to you can just use the slicers it's a very cool tool and you can show it with or without the data so you can see it with or without it doesn't matter uh, when when you're using slicer you don't actually have to look at the data itself that's all this time I hope you liked it if you do please click like thank you and see you next time